Hi, this is Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse and the DJI Colorado store. And we've had a lot of questions about the new Matrice 300 and how is it different from the Matrice 200. So we're going to do a little comparison and uh, show you side by side what they're like. Well, I'll start off with the controller. The Matrice 200 features the Sendence S, that's the version 2. The Sendence S is a Pretty hefty controller, lots of control on it, but a lot of them were never really implemented. So um, its usefulness, yeah, you know, it's probably a bit overkill. It did come with a seven inch Crystal Sky display, which is super nice. I've always really liked the Crystal Sky displays. And we'll move over to the 300, which comes with the Smart Controller Enterprise. Now this is very similar to the consumer smart controller, although it has a few upgrades to it, such as the WB37 battery plugs into the back, so you can have virtually unlimited flight time if you have extra batteries, so there's no worry about running out of battery during a mission. You always can just swap in another battery, so that's super nice. We'll get to the design here, and in the folded position, the M200 is a pretty long machine, very slender, but it's still pretty long. And the case is more like a rifle case, if you will, or you go with the GPC case, which is more of a standard design. And then we'll switch over here to the 300, which if you can see here is pretty significantly bigger in size. And the arms fold kind of uh, Matrice-ish. So I'm gonna try and do this with one hand here. They kind of have to go to at the same time. A little tricky to do with one hand. There we go. <clears throat> and the 300 does have sensors in it so that if you don't have them in place that you can't start which is kind of nice. So we'll get these arms opened up here. There we go. I get the other side. Okay, so here I have both systems unfolded, and you can see, let me see if I can get a perspective here. You can see how much bigger the 300 is over the 200. So it definitely is a, a bigger machine. Um, kind of a view there. Maybe that'll help show the differences in the machines. The 200 uses the TB55 batteries. The 300 uses these new huge TB60 batteries. So that's a significant flight time increase, almost double the flight performance on the 300. The M200 has the gimbaled FPV camera. And you know, a lot of us have just never been a fan of this because as the aircraft is moving, the gimbal is stabilizing things and sometimes you, you want that feel for how the aircraft is performing and when the horizon is always level you don't always get a feel for how windy the conditions are and things like that plus the camera on here was just so-so it would get washed out pretty easily in bright sunlight and a lot of people ended up cutting out nd filters to put on there to make it a lot more useful on the 300, we have a big, wide, fixed FPV camera. Now, while you will end up, you know, seeing, you know, more, and it's a wider angle, you also get a lot more telemetry while you're flying. You get wind speed indicators. You have your horizon tilt. You know, more information for the pilot to help him make informed decisions. And the quality is so much better when you're out in bright sunlight. It's just a super, super crystal clear image. Going back to the 200, it has the dual 
front obstacle avoidance where the 300 has it all over. Front, back, sides, top, eh, lots of obstacle avoidance. There's only dead spots coming like right off the arms and they're pretty small dead spots. So a lot better on the obstacle avoidance side. On the gimbal, the 200, 200, I mean the 210 series anyway, is gonna come with the dual gimbal setup by default and you can add a single gimbal or the top gimbal. On the 300, it's gonna come standard with the single gimbal, and you can add a dual gimbal as well as a top gimbal. And kind of the reason for that is the primary camera that people are gonna purchase with the 300 is gonna be the H20 or the H20T, and this eliminates having to need multiple payloads for a lot of operations where on the 210, you might go with an X-T2 and a Z30. Well, you can do that all with the single H20T, which is gonna have the wide angle lens, the 23 times optical zoom lens, the thermal camera, as well as the laser rangefinder. So big improvement on the camera. And this camera is really phenomenal and has a bunch of really neat features. Let's take a look at the landing gear setup. This has always been kind of a, if you want to call it a weak spot on the 200 series. If you came down hard, uh, we've seen this piece break a few times. We've seen these screws get stripped out. So this is a, a common replacement part on the 200 series. On the 300, you have this big chunky piece here that the arms slide into and are more locked in place. On the 200, it's basically this little latch with a pin that just kind of holds the gear in place. It works and it's lightweight, totally functional, but you really can't put payload on these legs because of that. With the 300, way more stout legs and this locking me mechanism makes it a lot more secure. So overall, you have a lot of robust improvements on here than you had on the 200. Let's look at the, the battery setup here. On the 200, you had a push button that would eject both batteries, and some people really wanted the hot swap ability. So the 200 series has, let me see if I can turn this here a little bit, you have this release switch to push the batteries out, and they're both going to pop out at the same time. On the 300, we have true redundancy, true hot swap. With this lever here, we simply unlock the batteries, pull out a dead battery, throw a new one in, pull the other one out, put a new one in, flip the switch back over to lock them in place, and you're back up in the air. No more having to re-weight for everything to reacquire and get back up in the air. So the 210, it did have these expansion ports on the back. And this made it fairly easy to add things like payload drop kits or lights that you could toggle on and off. So that was really nice having this as well as the power outlet on here, the little XT30. On the 300, there is no such beast. If we look under these covers here, what we see is a USB port on that side and a U2 actually, USB ports over here. So these main ones are used for the top gimbal or the centimeter uh, microwave radar thing, the CMS radar. And the USB port over here is used for doing your software updates. So there's no way to integrate a payload drop kit that I know of yet. So hopefully that's something that we can figure out and get things going with. Now, the, they both use the Pilot app, although the Pilot app on the smart controller has the features specific for the 300. You can actually take two of the smart controller enterprises together and either have a coach mode, you can have Pilot Cameraman, or you can actually do a handoff where you can actually change Pilot. Now, this can be handy for just rotating through your pilots, 
they can just, okay, I'm, I'm done, take control. Or in an inspection situation, you can have leapfrogging. So I'll take these three pylons, the next pilot drives ahead, he takes control when the bird gets close to him, he can continue flying, the first pilot can leapfrog and go ahead of him, and they can continually take control, being able to maintain that visual line of sight, and yet still be able to handle very, very long inspection projects. So that's kind of a short comparison between the 200 series and the new 300 RTK. I guess one more thing to mention is the 200 series had the 200, the 210, and the 210 RTK. So there's three different models. On the 300, you simply have the 300 RTK. Now you don't need to use the RTK. You don't even need to buy the base station. You can just fly it like you would a 200 or a 210, or because it has the integrated RTK in the aircraft, you can add a base station to it, the DRTK2 base station, or any base station that can act as an NTRIP server. You can also use network services such as NTRIP, Topcon Topnet, or Trimble VRS for high level precision. So that's a quick comparison of the two. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions, be sure and hit us up at enterprise at multicopterwarehouse.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.